Hello, I'm Caroline Wiseman and welcome to Alive in Lockdown. I'm talking today, I've got here with me is David Baldry, who is my the co-curator of Alive in the Universe. And we've got with us today, we've got Francesca Jubilee and also, uh, also Luca Berta, and they are both directors of the Venice Art Factory. And it was they who held our hand and really helped us so much with the staging of Alive in the Universe at the Venice Biennale last year. So welcome everybody. Hello. So, Hello. Um, here we go, David, you kick off with a question. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I suppose our thoughts are within, with, with Venice because that's where we were this time last year. It was pouring with rain. And I suppose you've had a lot of um, interesting things happen in the last year. You had big floods in November, was it, or December? It was November 12th. November uh, 12th? Yeah, it was the second highest, uh, worst, let's say, flooding in the history ah. of, well, uh, since we started recording them. Uh, okay. So there was one which was a few centimeters higher back in 1966. And so that was the one. biggest one, and then this yes. was nearly as big. But wow. only, only, a, only four centimeters more than than last year, and yes. it was quite so a lot of damage. Also, yes, a lot of damage. Also because it came quite unexpected, mm -hmm. because the forecast was much lower, and then all of a sudden, because mm -hmm. of a uh, strong wind coming from the south and pushing the water into the lagoon, mm -hmm. we ended up having. Uh, almost one meter 90 centimeter uh, wow. 90 centimeters um two level. Meters. but yes but this not of course this is very important to, to, to explain yeah. not above street level but above the zero level of the sea meaning that uh for instance uh you're uh, yeah in, in san marco square you would have a meter of water and right. San Marcos Square is the lowest point in Venice. Yeah. Yeah. So in most parts of Venice would have around 50 or 60 centimeters of water. Yeah. But a meter in San Marcos is I mean, incredible. Yeah. It's what about the Palazzo that we were in, the Palazzo Pissarro Papa Fava? How uh, how many feet meters do you think that might have well, been? Well probably yeah probably there around 80 centimeters so three three feet at three least. Three feet Yes. Because when we were there, of course, we had some flooding that we weren't expecting. And we had, how many inches was it, David? About eight inches, I think. Maybe eight inches. About so, eight yeah. inches. 20 centimeters. Which we maybe, weren't so. expecting. We, we survived yes. about three days. We had that. Because, then, yeah, because your space was on, on the ground floor. It mm. was uh, the, the portico of the palazzo. Yeah. Uh, and all the ground floors have been affected by the, the flood. Mm. Uh, water come uh, inside the palazzos from the water doors uh, as you had in your venue mm -hmm. but also from the floors from underneath yeah, ah. yeah underneath, right, okay. uh, we, we saw images of water coming also inside the houses and ground floors from mm -hmm. the walls spilling so, in from the walls yeah. Yeah, yeah it was crazy yeah that sounds awful and what about, um, before we talk about the project we were involved with, what about the effects of COVID and uh, how that's changing Venice at the moment? Because Venice needs a lot of people, but it hates people. Uh, so now you've got... <laughs> yeah, there, 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 wish. there's a controversy about that. Of course, as you know, uh, you know, there's this debate about over tourism in Venice, which is going on uh, for, I would say, probably a decade now. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is like a test for us. So we're running a test without tourists, yeah. and now most of the nations tend to want them back. <laughs> Strangely, we want enough. them back. Uh, well, they say we all is forgiven. We want you back, actually. Yes. Well, uh, actually, the idea is that we we should take this as an opportunity uh, to shape a different form mm -hmm. of experiencing the city uh, and of uh, attracting a certain type. Of tourism of visitors um, beginning with cultural offers cultural projects so th that should be the first like uh, first step for Venice yeah. to um, yeah to 
to give a positive turn to this predicament. And, and of course, the, the Venetian economy is mostly based on, on tourism. So the situation is dramatic, uh, but maybe uh, we can get a chance of uh, turning this dramatic situation into something that might bring some benefits on an, mm -hmm. on a long term i think that all venetians uh, uh, and people uh, uh, who love venice uh, really miss uh, the excitement uh, that you can appreciate and live in the city during the biennale period for example yeah. so uh, you probably remember uh, the the chaos uh, but also the magic that uh, you experience during the opening days of the Amazing. biennale Amazing. which is quite the same period we are in mm. now mm. Um, while at the moment the city is empty uh, all the shops restaurants bars are closed um, and i think that uh, uh, we all miss uh, that kind of experience of the city with a lot of people meeting coming from all over the world uh, and uh, uh, the, the public of the Biennale, public that appreciate exhibitions and cultures, it's really something that the city needs to survive. Mm. So what about the architectural Biennale? Would that have been uh, starting about now as well? Uh, it was scheduled to open uh, on May 23rd. So had, had much work been done to prepare for that already? Uh, well, uh, some work had been done, but now they've postponed it to uh, August 29th. Okay, so it's still going uh, to happen. Great. Yes, that's the idea. So okay. if, of course, if all the, the health and safety uh, requirements are met mm -hmm. in late August, the, the, the plan is to do the architecture biennale and we are also doing uh, we were also uh, planning to open our uh, design biennial the venice design biennial in, yeah. in parallel with the architecture biennale and we moved it to the autumn yeah. so we will do yeah. it in between september and november we think that uh, venice was the first european city uh, that uh, um, was officially affected by the, the virus. Uh, and I'm not sure if you remember that uh, it was the first city uh, that stopped the carnival. Uh, and so this news of yes. the, yeah. uh, the, the lock uh, of, and the, the stop of the carnival uh, um, uh, run around the world. So uh, we really think that uh, the idea of uh, reopening the city through a cultural big event as the Biennale is, uh, which is an international uh, um, uh, project that involves all the countries is uh, very important in terms of uh, um, giving uh, a new view uh, yeah. to all the world about what is possible to yeah. do after the after the virus so yeah. the idea of the biennale of reopening of reopen uh, the uh, the event uh, i think uh, it has a symbolic meaning so, this is something we really miss we miss people from all over the world as was the case i mean i don't know uh, the, the artist uh, taking part in Alive in the Universe came from a, a number of different countries and, yeah. and during the Biennale mm. yes we have people coming from all over the world mm. and we are used to that and now we miss it a lot we don't we don't hear people speaking foreign languages in the streets which is very sad yeah, yeah, yeah. so it sounds like you're being very positive about the whole thing so when you have your comeback it's going to be a big very positive statement you're making that it's going to be culture that's going to lead the way and that's what Venice is all about because yes. it is about the most you know, I think it makes yeah. a lot of sense. Culture should be yeah. at, at the forefront. Yeah, yeah this, this is the idea. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And this is where you two come in because you've had your business, you, you know, your company, which is the Venice Art Factory for about the last 10 years doing a wonderful range of projects. I can believe, tell us some of the, some of the people that, you've worked with helping them guiding holding helping them with exhibiting at the venice biennale tell us some of your clients that you've worked oh, we we recently 
um, go um, across all the yeah, photos, yes. uh, you can also see uh, on our website. Uh, and, and we wonder our, ourselves how, how it was possible that we did so many projects and different things uh, in these years. And it was uh, so exciting to see uh, yeah. what we what we did. And uh, I don't know if you want to say, oh, mention are, some, there yes. are so many. There are very many, but I mean, last year, for instance, uh, there were some extremely successful projects like um, the exhibition uh, brought by um, Parcel Unit Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, the Spark is You with nine Iranian artists. That was one of one of the yes, one of the highlights, I would say. That was an amazing finale. It was also an um, official collateral event of the Biennale. Yes, uh, and and also uh, the installation by James Lee Byers in the Church of uh, Santa Maria della Visitazione. That was also uh, very nice, um, and that was a collaboration with. Um, a, a Belgian foundation, Van Hyden's uh, collection. Uh, we did... And then the, the, also the two projects scale. with the uh, humanitarian uh, yes. organization. So we collaborated with uh, UNHCR, the um, United Nations Agency for Refugees, uh, and we organized uh, um, Rochko in Lampedusa, uh, where we we were the two curators of the project and then uh, Artivism, um, which was a project uh, uh, developed that by the um, Auschwitz Institute for Peace and Reconciliation. So it was uh, a pleasure for us uh, last year to collaborate also with these two humanitarian uh, uh, ONG. How about our project? How, about that in in how, um, that, how does that fit in with all your projects that you were organizing last year? Sorry, we, we missed just a how, sentence. Our, how did Alive in the Universe, how did that kind of fit in with all your projects that you were? Well, the, the, special, the special thing about Alive in the Universe uh, is that it was different every day. Uh, so uh, all the other projects were like more traditional exhibitions, yeah. so a display of artworks, yeah. whereas your project would change every single day, yeah. it would be totally different every day, yeah. uh, and the, the, also the emotional involvement and the personal contact with the artists of the day uh, was uh, totally different again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was, that was the, the what we could appreciate most uh, of your project and i think also what the audience appreciated yeah. and also the idea to have the possibility uh, to meet some of the artists involved in the project that generally is not possible when mm -hmm. you go to a more traditional uh, art exhibition where you have the chance sometimes to see the artist directly only during the opening event uh, while in your case uh, because of of the structure of the project uh, for the visitors was possible to to meet the artists the performers uh, that you invited mm -hmm. so it was something uh, very involving uh, and a different kind of experience that uh, visitors uh, uh, could do of uh, art projects mm -hmm. yeah and, and are you still are you working I mean, full on towards the next thing um, at the moment, or is it does it feel like you're, you've been sort of put on hold a little bit? Yeah, uh, there, there was like kind of pause. Uh, as I as I said, we were already planning the Venice Design Biennial, uh, and yeah. we're gonna do it, fingers crossed, <laughs> in anyway. in the autumn, uh, and then we're starting to work on some 2021 Biennale projects. Yeah um uh, you know there there's a little kind of uncertainty also about next year yeah uh, but but uh, over the past uh, two weeks i would say that people seem to be more confident that they can they can bring projects to venice uh, next year 
without you know too many concerns yeah, yeah. i think that people learn really need to look forward uh, mm -hmm. so um of course in europe uh, each country started uh, to struggle with the virus in a different moment so we are all now on different steps of the pandemic uh, but uh, for example in italy we started unfortunately first <laughs> Mm -hmm. But now uh, we can say that uh, the lockdown uh, uh, rules uh, uh, started to, to become softer. And, mm -hmm. and so the same will be in the other countries, uh, the same will be in the UK. And, and we are sure that in a few months, uh, the situation uh, will be better everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and we think that people really need to to start to think to the um, third or fourth step of the pandemic, which mm -hmm. means that uh, um, we need to go ahead uh, and, and think to the future. Otherwise, we, we will continue to stay stuck in, <laughs> in our uh, situation. Uh, and you get a sense of Italian people desperate to sort of get out and move forward. I mean, yeah. in England, it seems very like half the country is terrified of ever going out again. And the other half are just sort of, they're revved up and they can't wait. We were in your same situation uh, three weeks ago, two yeah. weeks ago, when the number of deaths continue every day to increase. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now, now it's different because at a certain point, you really have to think forward to the future, uh, not only for the art, ex um, the, the art uh, uh, field, but also all the other economic sectors need to, to look forward and find solutions to restart and reopen. Mm -hmm. It's also, really necessary for everybody. Yeah, and when, you, when you're, you're able to you know, go out again and meet your relatives, meet some friends, uh, you enter a different, a different mindset. So, and, yeah, and, yes. and you're able again to think about the future, which was really more difficult yeah. Yeah. just a few weeks ago. You know so, what I'm wondering is whether next year at the Venice <clears throat> Valley, which after all is a meeting ground for, for the whole world, uh, you know, um, art world, whether this whole pandemic is going to make any difference to the art or rather how the art's going to change, how the art world is going to change as an organisation and how the artists are going to make different art in response to the experience that we've all been through. Maybe it's made, you know, we're rethinking life, we're thinking, rethinking what it's like to be alive in the universe now, mm -hmm. all of us. So you might find that. Yeah, well, hopefully, I mean, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the conditions for uh, doing projects in Venice next year will be just as usual, uh, hopefully. Uh, we don't, we're not 100% sure that we'll have a vaccine already, but uh, hopefully there will be some treatments and maybe they will start with the vaccine quite you know, uh, we don't know. What we know is that um, maybe only truly motivated people will come to the Biennale to see the shows. So we might have like lower numbers, mm. but uh, and only people very uh, motivated, determined to yeah. see, to come and see, experience the art. One of the things you know that I, I've always found about the Biennale is that it has a title that is incredibly on the button. And last year, Ralph Rugoff gave it uh, this: "May you live in interesting times." And boy, that's where we are. Yeah, I mean, that's where we are. So you know, next time, I think whoever is curating it next year needs to think very carefully about what they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what they she, say. She, she, she still hasn't announced the title for next year. And, and I guess that if she was already thinking about the concept, uh, now she will have to revise it. Yeah. Because you know, after this you know, health crisis, everything 
uh, has been impacted. And so, it uh, affected every single country around the world. And of course, mm. at the Biennale, you get you have pavilions from every country around the world. And yeah. um, so it'd be interesting to find out how many of those pavilions are thinking about the huge health um, scare that we are still experiencing. Oh yeah, that, I'm sure that it will be one of the issues yeah. uh, to be addressed in, in the next Biennale. And we will see how uh, artists have responded to this situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious to see it, so, but I want to see it in person because yeah, I, I'm because so, so tired of online <laughs> viewings. Yeah. yeah. What we what we did in uh, these uh, two months of lockdown was really to see uh, to, to watch uh, everything possible online. So gallery views, exhibitions in 3D, and all these kind of things that can't really be the solution for the art world. So. Uh, it's really something that uh, people, of course, needed to use uh, uh, during the emergency. But uh, we really think that uh, as soon as possible, everybody would love to go back to the traditional traditional way of uh, experiencing art, uh, which means uh, uh, really going to visit the exhibition uh, and uh, get in contact with uh, the art pieces and the art world. Uh, uh, As was the case. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and well, of course here's the then to the Venice Biennale in 2021. Let's hope it's a roaring success. So it's been lovely talking to you. So David Baldry and I have enjoyed talking to you. Luca. Yeah. And Francesca from the Venice Art Factory. Enjoyed it too. And keep thank you well. to you for inviting us. Yes, thank you for having us. Keep well, Good. and we look forward to finding out what happens next year at the Venice Biennale. And coming along, let's all go along there. Let's all come we'll along. There. I really hope so. Bye bye then. Bye bye everybody. And okay. bye, -bye. bye everybody. Okay. Right. Ciao, bye. ciao 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 bye. 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 bye.